We are continuing on what I like to call the um, Holy Spirit series. Um, we've been teaching on these uh, Sunday messages about the person of the Godhead of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we're going to continue. But with just a, a little bit of a, of a twist or change, you know, including the interaction between um, God the Father God the Son, who is the Word, and, and the Holy Spirit. God is three in one. And so you, you can we can talk about the Holy Spirit and isolate the Holy Spirit because He's the one that guides and leads us into all truth. Amen. He is God in this earth that leads us into fellowship with the Father and the Son. And we want to look at that a little bit today, you know, that uh, God has given it unto uh, us, me and my wife, as apostles, to lay a foundation in the body of Christ, amen, to, to bring stability, amen, in the body of Christ, to, to rid the body of Christ with, of unsound doctrines and, and fables and, 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 and genealogies and, and things that are not right that people call the word of God that is, is not the word of God. And even that which is as basic as salvation, amen. That people know that if you call upon the name of the Lord Jesus, you'll be saved. People know that if you believe that God has raised Jesus from the dead, and if you confess with your mouth, Jesus be Lord, that you are saved. And yet, within salvation is what I like to call the process of, of salvation. That's where you're prospering. That's where your success, that's where your fruitfulness as a Christian is brought about in that continuous walk with the Lord. And so there, again, is so much misconception. You know, you, you get saved and then you just do what you want to do. Well, that's not what the body, that's not what the word of God says. You know, when I was, um, I got saved as a young boy, you know, maybe eight years old. And uh, that we went forth on what they call the mourner's bench there at the, at the Baptist church and I confessed Christ as Lord, though I did not know exactly what I was doing. I was given a script. I was instructed what to do. And afterwards, I remember hungering for the Lord, desiring, wishing that someone would guide me, would lead me, would dare shepherd me. I was, I, I felt so lost. <laughs> Amen. I, I, I began to try to seek after God. I read the Bible or attempted to read the whole Bible in search of the Lord. And yet I, I could not find him right away. Yet the Lord was there. He was drawing me and guiding me into the, the life that I'm not, that I'm now living today. Amen. And so, so many people have been in that boat. Amen. They thought you got saved and, and that's kind of was it. You kind of made it along your own way. You went to church, but the, you have to get to the place where you walk in the truth. Amen. And you walk in the truth by knowing God, knowing the Lord. If someone was recording this message, that, that would be the title, knowing God. Amen. Because you have to come into a place of knowing the one who saved you, knowing the one who created you, knowing the one who called you into this life. You're living a life for the one who created you and called you into this life. And so you don't just wing it. You have to, you have to know him. And so many people, they've heard about God. You know, we, we, we talk about God. Amen. We, we read about God. Amen. We, we interact and, and, and we attempt to praise God, uh, to worship God. Amen. We talk about the things of God. But the bottom line is, do you, do you know God? And what does the Bible say about knowing God? Amen. We are in, as I see it, we are in incredible times. And during these times, it is essential that you know the Lord. Amen. Because you, you have to know in a time of upheaval, in, in, in a time of disarray, in, in a time of things that are unknown, you have to know the one. 
amen, who is above everything, amen. The, the, the one who holds your life in the palm of his hand, you need to know him, amen. So in Hebrews chapter 12, it says, verse 28, it says, wherefore, we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Amen. And so it says that God is shaking, verse 27, everything that can be shaken so that the things which cannot be shaken would remain. God is shaking everything that can be shaken. Amen. And the things that can be shaken are the things that are made, the things that are not eternal. The word of God is eternal. Amen. God is eternal. Amen. And so we're in a time where things are being shaken. Amen. Of things that can be shaken so that the things that cannot be shaken shall be, shall remain. And then verse 28 again, wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. So we need grace to serve God acceptably, amen, because everything is being shaken. But we're in the kingdom of God, which cannot be moved, it cannot be shaken. The, the Bible says the kingdom of God, there is no end. It increases, it does not decrease. And it is stable, and it removes everything else that can be shaken. Everything that can be shaken represents the kingdom which is not of the Lord, the kingdom of the world. Everything in the kingdom of this world will be shaken. Everything that people trust in, every institution, everything that people said was rock solid, everything which was not the Lord, because it is not the Lord, for the kingdom of God to come in fullness Everything which can be shaken must needs be shaken so that people can put their trust in God, amen, who cannot be shaken and build their life and allow the Lord to build their life on a kingdom, his kingdom, which cannot be shaken. You must be found in him, amen. You must be found in the one who is eternal. You must know the one who is eternal. So there's principles at play that you're in the world, but you're not of the world. Lots of things in the world moving. Everything is going. Everything is shaking. You know, things are happening. All kinds of things in the world. Amen. But your life is supposed to be found in God. You got born again. You received the Holy Spirit to bring you into the kingdom. And that's where so many Christians have missed it. For so many times, the Bible says, it appeared that God winked at certain things because God is so gracious. He is so long-suffering and forbearing that when you are living and, and, and building <laughs> and working, all the building may not be of the Lord. All the working that you're doing may not be of the Lord. The Bible says, seek first kingdom of God, his righteousness, and everything will be added unto you. So in this earth realm, that your, your, your mandate, amen, is that everything you do, you do it from your heart as unto the Lord, you know. Even your, your working, the Bible says, when work as unto the Lord, pleasing God before pleasing man, amen. You're not attempting to please man. If you please God, then people will be pleased, amen, with your life. If you're an employee and if you sought to please God, your work would please the one who employed you. Amen. And so that's our heart. That's our, that's our mandate. Amen. That we're called to live a life out of God, out of Christ. Amen. That our life is found in him. Let's put it that way. And our life is in the kingdom and not of the world. Amen. And if our life is in the kingdom, the kingdom of God cannot be shaken. Amen. So you need to know what that is. What does it mean to be in the kingdom of God? Amen. What does it mean to operate in the kingdom of God? Amen. And so we want to look at those things just quickly. Amen. And, and, and to show the place of the Holy Spirit in our life, 
the place of Jesus in our life, the place of the Father God in our life. We are in what the Bible calls a, a evil world. Jesus says sufficient for the day is the evil thereof. You're in an evil world. Amen. Without the Lord, all the world knows how to be is evil because it's operating by wisdom and knowledge, which is not of God. Amen. And so it's operating by dictates and standards and, and, and wisdom and understanding, which is not of God. All that stuff can be shaken. All those things are, 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 can, can be changed. It, it is circumstances. It can be moved. It's not stable. Amen. Remember the things that people trusted in, it is essential that those things be shaken. So all eyes will be upon the Lord Jesus. Amen. Every eye is, is going to behold Jesus. It just depends on where you behold him. Amen. Will you turn to the Lord? If you are saved, amen, will you trust in God? Amen. If you're not saved, will you receive Jesus as Lord and receive the Holy Spirit and begin operating in a kingdom, his kingdom, which cannot, which cannot be shaken. Amen. And so that if you don't know, it's the things that you don't know that unsettles you. Amen. It's, it's the unknown. Amen. Which calls you to be shaky. Amen. And so what the Lord is trying to say is that if you know him who is above everything, amen, then you can operate in perfect peace. The Bible says he keeps our minds in perfect peace, whose minds are stayed on him, not the world, not the things that move and shake, amen, but him who is not shaken, amen. And so in Matthew chapter 7, Beginning with verse 21, and uh, I'm starting with verse 21 on purpose. I'm, I'm going to talk about building your house upon the rock, but I want to start a little bit above that. Matthew chapter 7, beginning with verse 21. Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Heaven is running things. You need to know that. Amen. And everybody that says, Lord, Lord, will not enter in, but the one that does the will of the Father. This is, this is so key because people have watered down the gospel. Amen. And yet the words of Jesus stand forever settled in heaven. The word of Jesus stands sure. He says, not everybody who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of the Father who is in heaven. Heaven is running things. Amen. And God's will from heaven is supposed to be done in the earth realm. Amen. And it says that, so somebody is saying, Lord, Lord. So they think, apparently, that they know the Lord. They are either, they either think it or they're deceiving themselves somewhere along the line, or they're trying to deceive the Lord. He says, everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So heaven is a kingdom. It is part of the kingdom of God. When we were born again, we were born into the kingdom of God. That's why there's supposed to be a seamless transition from this earth realm to heaven because we have already made it our aim to know God and to please the Lord and to accept him, get this, according to his dictates, his will. Your salvation can be not according to what you think it ought to be. God is king. Of, he is king of kings, Lord of lords. Amen. He started this thing. He put you here for a reason. Amen. And so it shall be according to the dictates of the king who is loving. Don't get it wrong. Don't think that he is harsh. But it will be according exactly what he said it would be. Amen. Amen. So everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will not enter. But Jesus says, it is he who does the will of the Father. So you're going to have to know what is the will of the Father. Amen. It says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, 
and done many wonders in your name. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness or workers of iniquity. Jesus says that the people that say that, I never knew them. There was nothing wrong with prophesying. Nothing wrong with casting out devils. In fact, we are commanded to do that. But there is something wrong. Jesus says that I never knew you. Amen. Everyone that prophesies, everyone that casts out devils, that doesn't mean that they don't know the Lord. In fact, they're supposed to do it out of knowing the Lord. But there are those that will do things without knowing the Lord and without the Lord knowing them. So we're talking about a relationship, fellowship, where we know the Lord. And he knows us by name. He calls us by name and we are called by his name. That's covenant. Amen. So let no one deceive you what salvation is. Salvation is a covenant with the Lord. Amen. When we enter in that covenant, it's not supposed to be broken. God will not break his part. The Bible says God does not break covenant. He does not. He does not alter the thing that proceeds out of his mouth, but it is possible for us to break covenant with the Lord by denying him and not approaching him according to the truth. We can be acting outside of his will. Now, listen, if you have sinned, if you have gotten out of the will of God, simply repent, turn away from that and turn back to the Lord and get right back in covenant with the Lord. He is keeping his part. Amen. And so we have grace, the Bible says, to serve the Lord acceptably, especially when things are shaking. Amen. We have grace, amen, to interact, navigate in a present evil world to still serve God acceptably. Amen. Except accepted by the Lord to please God, to approve those things that are acceptable, that we have an obligation, amen, to find out what is God's will, amen, because the Bible says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God wants his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven, just like heaven. They are in heaven. Everyone in heaven is submitted unto God, everyone. Angels, <laughs> the, the citizens, those, those that have died, the saints, amen. All those different types of, 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 of creations and creatures, even things that are not upon this earth. Everything is held together in unity and oneness and harmony around the honor of Jesus, amen. And, and by honoring Jesus, they please the Father and they are able, get this, to operate in the, the, that, that spirit of being submitted unto God without of a willing heart. Amen. Everything moves in harmony in heaven. Everything is in agreement. Every praise, every worship, every oh, shout of holy, holy, holy. Everything is moving in harmony, synchronized, held together intact. When Jesus made everything, he held everything in orbit, <laughs> intact, in gravity. Everything was made right. Everything was framed correctly because it was submitted unto him. Amen. And every star that beamed it, and everything that moved gave honor and glory unto God. And because it did, it honored Jesus. Amen. And it was held intact, divine order so to speak, righteous, so to speak, amen. And so we see why heaven would be the template, amen. That kingdom come, that will be done on earth, just like it is in heaven, as it is in heaven, where everything is submitted correctly unto the Lord, to the will of God, amen. No rebellious spirit, amen. That Lucifer was cast out of heaven because of rebellion, Amen. And so heaven retains that divine order. The devil hit this earth. Amen. And started the spirit of rebellion for people who would listen to his voice and operate by his spirit, the course of the world, instead of the voice of the Lord. That's why the words of Jesus are so important. The words of God are so important. 
Because we have to hearken unto the voice of the Lord to be caught up in the, the spirit of the flow of God. People teach against the Holy Spirit or the flow of God. There is a order of God. Just like there is a order, a course of the world. The Bible says the spirit that works in the sons of disobedience or, or rebellion, they operate according to a spirit. That the spirit of the devil, a course. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of divine order of unity, bringing all things into submission unto the Lord. Amen. So that we can not only hear God's voice, but we can operate in that, that atmosphere, that course of peace. Jesus came to bring us into peace with the Father, but peace with heaven. Amen. There's rebellion on this earth. You see it everywhere of those that are not submitted unto God. They are in rebellion. You cannot do your own thing. You cannot be in anarchy. You cannot be against government, government officials. You cannot be against the ordinances of God. You cannot be against the authority that God set. That is disorder and rebellion. There is a course in this world, which is a course of rebellion against God. Well, they are actually in rebellion against the order of heaven. We are called to operate in the kingdom of God to bring divine order into situations where they are, there's chaos and disorder. That's what the gospel does. When the kingdom comes, the kingdom is advanced, amen, by the Holy Spirit bringing everything into divine order. So you must um, operate by the dictates, the course, the flow of the Holy Spirit. You must learn the, the, the way of the spirit to even know the, the word of God. Amen. The word operates according to the patterns, the flow, the dictates of God that brings your life and everything that it touches into divine order. There is a flow. Amen. By the Holy Spirit. And you must learn to operate in that flow or you will be guilty of being a religious person, but not knowing God. Amen. To know God, you must know the Holy Spirit first. Amen. So I make it clear to know God. First, you must know the Holy Spirit or you must be conscious and aware of the truths that the Holy Spirit are bringing you into. It's the Holy Spirit that is guides and leads you to all truth, shows you things to come. It is the Holy Spirit. He, he is the one who opens your eyes to the Spirit. He, he is the one that causes you to esteem spiritual things. Be, unless you are operating by the spirit, you will esteem natural things in natural ways. Amen. And so you and you cannot attain to the spirit outside of the spirit. In other words, you, you must yield to the Holy Spirit. You're not. It is illegal to engage in the spirit realm without the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the Old Testament, they said that they suffered not a witch to live. That was in the Old Testament. That spirit of witchcraft, God does not want it to live. Amen. In the New Testament, amen. That witchcraft, amen, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, operating in the spirit realm, trying to achieve things, accomplish things. There are people that have discovered that things began to work for them. Amen. And when they found out that certain things began to work, they began to practice certain things. I'm speaking to someone here. You may not have even known. Amen. That, that you, you've heard certain things, you know, about success or you, you, you notice that 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 people um, are attracted to certain things or yield to certain things that you have a certain seem like you have a certain power. Amen. If that is not of the Holy Spirit, you are engaged in witchcraft. Amen. If that is not the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit has a way. And it is in, in accordance to the word of God. The Holy Spirit will not break the word of God. And the word of God will not be outside the realms of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You cannot have the word without the spirit of life upon it. Amen. And you cannot operate in the spirit of God without it being lined up with the dictates of the word of God. Amen. And so people, there are people who have tried to achieve certain things 
and they find out things begin to work. Listen, the, these are the last days. I, I cannot sugarcoat things. Amen. We cannot be double-minded. We cannot be in the world and in the kingdom of God. It does not work. If you're operating by a spirit that is not the spirit of God, now you are under the dictates of the operations of the devil and his demons. Amen. And so you have to be cleansed of that by coming to the Lord, renouncing those things. Amen. And to receive the ways of God. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All things will be added unto you. Amen. People want things without seeking first the kingdom of God and without being yielded unto the righteousness which is of God. You must be submitted to the righteousness, which is of God. So Jesus says that there were many that say, Lord, Lord, shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my father, which is in heaven. Many will say on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. That is not anything to laugh about. You know, hell was not designed for people and anyone going to hell or being lost to hell. It is, it is such a grievous thing. Amen. The Bible says, consider your ways. Amen. God wants everyone. I don't care how spiritual you think you are to be still before the Lord. Consider your ways. Amen. Let the Holy Spirit invite the Holy Spirit to examine your heart and show you those things that are not of the Lord. Amen. They acknowledge those things that are of the Lord. That's how you walk with God. The Lord wants to feel more and more of your life. Amen. And so the way that you do that, you're not afraid of God. You're not afraid. To, listen, the Lord is for you, not against you. You do not have to run from the presence of the Lord. Amen. And you can, you should not be afraid to invite the Lord to fill you up completely with the Holy Spirit. You should not be afraid to ask the Lord to examine you completely and show you things that are right. Because if you love the Lord, you are willing to do his will. If you love him. You are willing to do what he commands you to do. And if you're not, you're showing that you don't love him. Verse 24, Jesus says, Matthew chapter 7, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him unto a wise man who built his house upon the rock. The rain and the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not, does not them, does not do them, he will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it fell, and great was its fall. So Jesus says, you are wise if you build your house upon the rock. The person that builds the house upon the rock are the people that hears his sayings and does them. Wise means that you are building your house on the wisdom of God, not the wisdom that is of the world. So your job is to hear the Lord, to know him, to hear him. And whatever he commands you to do, that's what you do. That is the, his words. He is the rock. He is the foundation. Amen. He is the rock that is not cut out by hands that became a mountain that crushed every other kingdom. In the book of Daniel, it describes Jesus being that rock that was not cut out by hands. Amen. God says in the, when in the, in the tabernacle, he says, the altar should be made of a rock that is not cut out by man, <laughs> solid, that is not cut, no tool, no man has touched it, <laughs> amen. What is he saying? He's saying your life, that place, that altar unto the Lord, your heart and your life, everything is built on Jesus Christ, amen, not your own doings, not your own work, amen, that that which man presents. Amen. That is not Jesus is not accepted. Your life should have the aroma of Jesus. Your life must look like Jesus. When you lay down everything and take up your cross and follow Jesus, 
when you love Jesus above everything, that is a life that pleases God because what God sees, what God hears, what God smells is that offering of Jesus. Amen. Your life is an offering. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed, amen, by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable and perfect will of God. Your life is an offering. You said that salvation was free. I thought they said salvation is free. It costs Jesus everything, amen. And the Bible clearly says that if he died for you, then we should live for the one who died for us and gave us life. Amen. If he died for us, then we're supposed to live for him. So we're supposed to do his will. And so the wise man builds his house upon the rock. That is Jesus. He also says that is these words. Jesus is the word. These sayings of mine. Amen. That if you will do these sayings of mine, you are building your house upon the rock. And so in these times of shaking and stirring, in these days of unrest, in these days of evil reports, amen, Jesus is saying that if your house is built upon the rock, you will not be shaken. You will not fall. You will not be de deterred. You will not stumble, amen, because your house is built upon something that cannot be moved. It cannot be shaken, the word of God. Amen. Jesus himself cannot be shaken. Amen. It is like Peter walking upon the water. He, he says, he sees Jesus walking on the water. He says, Lord, if it's you, bid me come. Jesus says, it is I. Come. Peter is walking on the water, looking at Jesus, transcending the natural realm. Amen. Because what he is standing on is not natural. He's standing on the words of Jesus. It is I. Come. Amen. Those words, his words are able to sustain you over the natural because the natural, the natural can be turbulent. It can be stormy. Amen. But the Lord says, I come that you may have peace in the midst of the storm. Amen. In many instances, you, out of your own mouth, are able to speak peace to any storm in your life, amen. And anything that tries to impose itself as a mountain, you can speak into the mountain and command it to be removed. That mountain represents a kingdom which is not of the Lord. The only mountain in your sight is supposed to be Mount Zion. It's supposed to be the Mount of God, amen, representing the kingdom of God. We are part of that kingdom. This is what I'm trying to get you to see. We are not natural people. We are part of the same kingdom, amen, the kingdom of heaven, amen. We are part of the kingdom of God. The example is the kingdom of heaven. The Lord wants to bring those, those, those principles, amen, and that word and that wisdom, which causes everything to bow the knee to Jesus, to, to acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. The Bible says that because God, because Jesus humbled himself, even unto death upon the cross, that God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord of things in heaven and earth and under the earth, every realm they must bow the knee to Jesus. You can operate in that kingdom now. That's why he gave you Jesus' name. Everything must bow the knee to Jesus. Amen. You have right of authority. If you submit it to the Lord properly, not rebellious, loving him, amen, yielded unto the dictates of the Holy Spirit, you can be trusted with the name of Jesus. You can be trusted with the power and the authority because you're loyal to the kingdom of God. You, it is your right. It is your birthright. Amen. The Bible says many instances in the word of God, these things uh, have all the saints. Amen. It says that this benefit has all the saints. Amen. Such as, you know, the, the, the Bible talks about no weapon formed against us shall prosper, you know, and that we condemn in judgment every word that is spoken against us. We're able to silence, to condemn. This right have all the saints, you know. Psalms 149, it talks about how that we have the high praises of God in our mouth, a two-edged sword in our hands to bind the devil, 
with chains and with fetters. This and to execute the judgment written upon him. This right have all the saints. You need to know what your benefits are. You need to know what your rights, but they are not disconnected from the Lord. Okay, from his authority, from the dictates of the Holy Spirit. Your rights are connected to the Lord. You cannot operate as a rebellious um, um, secret agent, double agent. You cannot operate as, as, a, as a freelancer, amen, because you're actually not a freelancer. If you're not under the dictates of the kingdom of God, as by the Holy Spirit, you're operating for the kingdom of Satan or the kingdom of the world because he is the one who is that rebellious spirit. The Bible says in the book of Job, Leviathan, the king over the sons of pride. Amen. He is that, that dragon. He is that. He's the one that's over that rebellious spirit. So when you're operating by rebellion, you're un operating under his spirit. And the only way to be completely yielded unto the Lord is not just the word of God, yielded to the word of God, but the, the spirit of God, amen, who is the one that teaches you the, the word of God, amen. So you're called to know God, amen. You're not just to be saved, amen, but your, your process, salvation, the package <laughs> includes knowing God, which is a good thing, amen. Turn with me to St. John. St. John chapter 17, amen. We're talking about knowing God, amen, and being brought into that place of knowing God by the, by the Holy Spirit. St. John chapter 17, beginning with verse two, and we'll read three also. Jesus is praying. It says, he is praying to the Father. He says, as you, Father, have given him authority over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. So God gave Jesus this authority, to give a eternal life to the one that God has given him. And this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God in Jesus, whom you have sent. Amen. So this is eternal life that you may know God, the father and Jesus, whom God has sent. Amen. And I have told you to know Jesus, amen. You must first acknowledge the drawing of the Holy Spirit. So there has to be a knowing of the Holy Spirit to know Jesus who introduces you to the Father, amen. We talk about God, God is three in one. God wants you to know him, God the Father, your Abba. And even though Jesus is one with the Father God, the Lord wants you to know him, amen, because you're heirship. We are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus. You don't even know how to walk in your inheritance without Jesus, your Lord, amen. And so you must know Jesus, your Lord, as your Lord to even enter into the things of God. And the Holy Spirit, we see the whole time was working righteousness, even in this earth realm, drawing you unto Jesus and to the Father. The Holy Spirit was speaking unto you what was truth. The Holy Spirit was bringing your life into divine order as much as you would yield unto him by making Jesus Lord and receiving his words. Amen. The Holy Spirit, the whole time. So, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you got to know God, but you got to know how they work together. They are one. They work in concert. Amen. Because you are called into this same oneness. <laughs> you are part. You're, the way that you're supposed to operate in your salvation is operating the same way. Amen. That God is three in one, the Godhead. Amen. And that God is the head of Jesus. The Bible says that in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, but Jesus does not fight or strive with God. The, the, the will, he did the will of the Father and he does the will of the Father. God worked good works, perfect works. Amen. Jesus, when he ministered upon this earth, he did those same good works that where the devil tried to make it appear that those works were undone. Remember, those works are actually established. That's why you can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover because sickness is not established. That's not the truth. It is not righteousness. 
You can lay hands on the sick and see them recover because that is the good work that God worked from the beginning that people were not sick. Amen. And so you can work in concert with the Lord. You can do the works of God. Jesus says by believing the one whom God has sent, which is Jesus. Amen. And so eternal life is knowing the Father, knowing the Son, knowing the Holy Spirit. Amen. So that when we get to heaven, we will already know the Lord and he will already know us. Amen. Remember, we entered into covenant. We took his name. And he took our reproach. Our name was reproach before the Lord. He removed our reproach and gave us his name. And so for us to be legal, we have to operate by his name. Amen. Covenant. Amen. He gave us his name and everything that his name entails. Amen. Remember, the Lord is royalty. Not just any royalty. He's the, he's the highest of the high. He's the only God. The only true God, but he is king. Amen. So it means something for the Lord to give us his name in covenant. So knowing God, eternal life is knowing God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's how we enter into eternal life. And if that, if you know the Lord, then you would have to acknowledge who he is. Amen. In other words, you're not called to be saved, and, and to deny who the Lord is. Who God is affects us, amen, because it is who he is in relationship to us and fellowship unto us. So there is a demand on us when we know God, amen. There's an obligation. There is fellowship that takes place, amen, which continuously changes our life. So you must know the Lord. Matthew chapter 16, it takes a while to lay foundations, amen, and that used to, that used to bother me, I have so much to say, and I, and I look down, and, and I've only gotten through a couple of scriptures, and there's so much more to say, but listen, if these, if, if, if these teachings mean anything to you, then subscribe, go after them, that the Lord has given us this word, amen, and so we want you to have this word, but it must be valuable unto you. If you see me in the natural, these words will not mean anything to you. If you see my wife, Apostle Vivian, in the natural, then these words would not mean anything to you. But if you receive them as from the Lord, as precious, amen, that they, ha, ah, holy God, <laughs> let me, they will change you, amen. They will get a hold of you. They will captivate you because in the kingdom of God, you are deceiving yourself if you think you're operating in the kingdom of God and the Lord has not captivated you. If, if you are not, what's the word, slain before the Lord, what I mean slain, that you cease to exist. If, if you are fooling yourself, amen, if you think that you're serving God with all your heart and yet he does not move you to give up everything, nothing means anything except the Lord to you, then the kingdom of God has not really come to you, amen? You may be near the kingdom of God, but the kingdom of God, it captivates you, amen? It opens up your consciousness to the truth. The devil has lied to you your whole life, and you looked at things through blinds or shades, through scales your whole life, even in your Christianity. You have not looked at things according to the wholeness of the truth. Amen. And so you have not received the fullness of Jesus. You've not received the fullness of what he's intended for you. Amen. And so that we preach the kingdom. The kingdom has to come. And you must be conscious and aware. And you can tell when the kingdom comes because you'll never be the same. Amen. That your life belongs to God and you desire him to abide in his presence, in his kingdom. Amen. So the things that used to be important to you are not important to you anymore. You look at things according to his dictates. He will take care of you. He will direct your life. He will change the course. Amen. And put you in that spirit, <laughs> the Holy Spirit, that course. Amen. Which will unveil unto you your very life. And it will unveil the, the direction, the dictates that God will cause you to live. Amen. Things will change. It's important. 
It is impossible for the kingdom of God to come to you and things not change. Amen. It will change everything in your life. And that's what these messages will do. They will captivate you if you allow the Holy Spirit to teach you. Amen. That you yield to him. Let him enter. Open your heart completely. And let the Holy Spirit begin to deal with you. Amen. So in Matthew chapter 16 and beginning with, let's start with verse 13. It says, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist and some say Elijah and others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Then he said to them, Simon, he said to them, who, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. So Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they answered. Some say John the Baptist. Some say Elijah. Some say Jeremiah, one of the prophets. So those are good guesses. <laughs> those are good guesses. You, what I'm trying to say if you did not know the Lord, those would be, you know, guesses. He's doing mighty works and you're trying to figure out who he is. And he's like a lot of people, or should I say a lot of people are like him, John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah. He says, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, or son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father who is in heaven. And also I say unto you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Amen. So, Jesus, just to summarize, asked who he was, and they said some guesses that the people were saying, but he asked, but who do you say? Peter said, thou art to Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus says, you're blessed because flesh and blood, the natural did not reveal this, but it was revealed. So knowing who Jesus was, was revealed. Amen. And Peter said, and, and, and Jesus said, that is a, a blessed place to be where who I am is revealed unto you because you cannot know me unless it is revealed of my father. So knowing the Lord, amen. We, I'm, I'm laughing because I only got into about two or three points and I'm gonna have to let it go. Knowing the Lord comes about through revelation, amen. Revelation comes about by the Holy Spirit. We'll look at that maybe next time. And that it is revelation knowledge that Jesus is the Christ or that is it looses the keys of binding and loosing upon this earth that Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one, the rightful heir, the Messiah, the son of the living God. In other words, Jesus came legally into this earth realm and where Adam failed, Jesus, he did the will of the father, all the will of the father. Amen. Even so much so that he brought us into that victory of him conquering death, hell, and the grave. He brought us into that victory in him, in Christ Jesus. Amen. And so by revelation knowledge of who the Lord is, we're able to bind and loose upon this earth realm that which the devil cannot mess with. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church. This is the rock. Jesus says that I build my church. We talked about that. Those that do these words of mine, that revelation knowledge that comes by the Holy Spirit. They are the people that are operating by the wisdom of God. Upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The storms, the winds, that which is unstable, that which um, is, is unrest, amen. That which tries to take your peace, that, that cannot um, um, take away Amen. Your stability for upon this rock, Jesus says, I build my church. It is by knowing the Lord. Knowing the Lord is by revelation knowledge. Revelation knowledge is by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit 
will bring you into intimacy with the Lord. It is called abiding. Amen. It is where you are aware of the Lord. How many people live their life and not really been aware of the Lord? How many people have denied the presence of the Lord? How many people have denied the existence of miracles and healings and signs and wonders? How many people have not really known the Lord in a personal way? How many people do not on a, on a constant basis hear the Lord for direction? How many people does not know the witness of the Holy Spirit? The Lord has called you not only into salvation, but abiding. Abiding is intimacy based on covenant word, which the Lord gives to you personally through intimacy, your life. And this is the rock, amen, that you are built upon and your life is built upon where your your life, amen, your house will stand, amen, because actually, if you are obeying the Lord, it is the Lord building the house, amen, unless the Lord build a house, they are laboring in vain, amen, so there's a lot to digest there, just, oh, just introductory into knowing the Lord, that helping you in your salvation, helping you, amen, to mature. So Father God, we thank you for that word, amen, that you're bringing soundness to the body of Christ. You're removing that which is unsound, amen. You are removing that which corrupts. You are removing that which pollutes. You are removing that which tries to undermine you and undermine your word. <laughs> because your kingdom advances, it will not stand. And I stand in agreement with you, Lord. I'm, we are, Christ be glorified ministry. We are with you, Lord, with that kingdom advancing. Amen. Shaking everything in its path. Amen. Destroying everything which is not of the Lord. Removing unsound doctrine. Removing that which is man's works. We're with you, Lord. We're on your side. Amen. You said to declare your kingdom, to say it. Those that are not with you are against you. We're with you, Lord. Amen. Have your perfect work, Lord God. Use us, Lord. Let us be vessels. Use this ministry, Lord God, to advance the kingdom of God. We're not afraid of shaking. We're not afraid of stirring. Amen. Because our lives are found in you, Father God. Help us, oh Lord, to be sincere. Help us, Lord God, to regard the, the truth. Amen. Help us to embrace the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen.